But the Olympic Peninsula, I mean, in terms of trees, once you leave California, the giant sequoias and the coast redwoods, and you come up here onto the Olympic Peninsula, then we start running into the next largest, like western red cedar, and the world's largest western red cedar is up here. And on the south shore of Lake Quinault, in um, Olympic National Forest, the world's largest Douglas firs. And you come into Olympic National Park and the world's largest Sitka spruces. And the the world's largest grand firs and the world's largest silver firs and all these other species that comprise the 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 library of conifers in in western north america the largest ones occur right here on the olympic peninsula some of which are in olympic national park and they're not hard to get to most of them so sometimes i think about the uh, rainforest as a land of a billion shadows and in each shadow, there's a feast for your intellect, a mystery, if you will. Uh, behind me, hidden amongst these vine maples here, is a giant Sitka spruce. These trees grow rapid. In the hierarchy of trees, as it, it, at least in terms of achievable size, Sitka spruce um, fall right behind Douglas firs in their um, potential size. Only they managed to achieve this size in as little as 350 years. This tree behind me is probably under 400 years old. Uh, if you were standing next to a redwood of this size, you'd probably be talking about 700 or so. So this area is very productive. These trees, these massive trees, are rare as conifers go, but when you come to the whole rainforest, it is the optimum place for Sitka spruce. When we talk about rainforest, you think of monkeys and big snakes. In temperate rainforests, it's different. We don't have monkeys. We don't have many snakes and no venomous snakes. It's a pretty benign place in terms of any potential danger. But one of those unique things about this place is how trees begin their life. 90% of all conifers or needle bearing trees begin their life on a piece of fallen wood. There's a lot of reasons for this. I mean, one is, as I mentioned before, we're in the Shanghai of the plant world. So if you're a seed and you fall from the sky, ultimately the odds are you're going to fall on top of another plant and you're not going to be able to germinate. And so the Temper Rainforest has this sort of built-in urban renewal where these trees fall down in windstorms and then upon their backs these seeds fall. It's the only piece of open real estate in which to colonize and they begin their lives on these fallen logs and the fungus inside that log that's decomposing it ever so slowly is releasing all the nutrients that tree is going to need to grow into a healthy tree and that's the cycle. In, in the tropical rainforest it's real hot, right? Hence tropical but here it's cold, like a forest in a refrigerator, or maybe like the refrigerator in my dorm when I was in college. A lot of decomposition going on, but not very quickly. Anyways, and so these, in the tropics, a log that falls down, if you come back a year, maximum two years afterwards, and there's nothing left of it. But here, it takes as long for a fallen tree to decompose as it did for it to grow. So this provides an opportunity for colonization, uh, new trees to grow, and resets the clock, and this cycle continues.